Baby, let me ask you something Are you a ride or die, baby? Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Baby, let me ask you something Would you ride or die for me? Just ask that you give me the direction to speak in this video and lead me, Lord. Hopefully, whoever watches this video, let this resonate in your spirit and let it be inspiration and motivation. So, thank you, Lord Jesus. This whole thing is about Jesus Christ and how He saved my life. What's up guys, it's your girl Kaya and you guys know me from Cute and Kaya and today this video is going to be very very different. We're just going to be doing a testimony video and we're going to be testifying of the goodness of God. We're going to be glorifying God. You're going to see that a lot on our channel guys. Before I get into the video, make sure you subscribe. Um, make sure you follow me on Instagram at she's a Kaya and TikTok Q and Kaya. So we're just going to get into it. So first things this is going to be a little bit emotional for me, but I just want to be transparent with you guys. Like, I really want you guys to understand, like, how we got to where we got me and my husband. And so, you know, for starters, it was not always easy. Being a social media influencer, we went through a lot, I mean, a lot to get to this point. Right now, it's kind of just, to us, it's a little bit surreal because... We always wanted to come to Texas. We always wanted to, you know, be social media influencers. We always wanted to just, you know, go down that lane. But fast forward, well, actually rewind to when we first, first wanted to get our feet wet with doing social media. You know, I came to my husband with the idea like, hey, you know, let's do YouTube. You know, it's a couple thing, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he wasn't really interested in it. He didn't really understand it. Like he came from a different walk of life compared to me. And so, you know, when I was telling him about this, he wasn't, you know, really feeling it. But then he saw, like, you know, you can make income. Me and my husband, we have four children. Um, he had a child already on his own, and I had a child on my own. So, you know, all together, it makes four children. And we really, only really just have each other, like, you know. And this is not to bash anybody, to anybody watching this, but this is just me being authentic and just being real with our life and our story nine times out of ten it's always just been us um we've been homeless together we actually had lived in a hotel together i was going through things with my parents we weren't seeing eye to eye i had a lot of issues growing up with my parents i've been put out more times probably more times than you can count like i used to have really bad anger issues like i felt really really alone there were times where i like literally cut myself I was really quiet in school because I was battling like a lot of things that people didn't know that I didn't even could barely understand. And it was just a very, very, very difficult time for me. Fast forward back to us, my husband, I met him at a job and we met and then we kind of click right then and there. You know, then we started to realize like, okay, you know, he wants something out of life, I want something out of life. Nobody got time to be playing games. So we got a little bit serious fast. Fast forward, I had got pregnant with our first child and things got very real. So, you know, we had our kids or whatever. After I had my son, uh, I had gotten to this altercation with my parents again. Like I was, um, me and my mom, we were not seeing eye to eye at all. And like, I was kind of living in their basement at the time because I was still, I was still pretty young and I had two children, very, very young. But yeah, I was basically living in the basement. We had gotten to an argument. It was a really, really bad argument to the point where the courts got involved. The police came over to the house and I ended up, I think I actually ended up like getting a restraining order or like a, something like that. And basically I didn't know how serious it was and I had to end up going to court. And well, the first court date I had missed and then I had ended up going to court again. And then that's when you know, things kind of got really real, we felt alone. Like, I felt like, wow, like, what am I finna do? Like, I have a son, my parents are trying to put me out the house. And mind you, I would work. Although, if you know me, I would just work, do my job, come home. That's pretty much it. I wasn't going to clubs. I wasn't in the streets. I wasn't messing with different men, all that type of stuff. I was always kind of like, 
to myself, you know, doing my thing. Going through things with my parents have put me into a really, really dark place. I was already in a dark place because I never felt like I fit in. Like, I struggled with anxiety at a, long, at a young, young age, and I didn't know what it was. Um, I would feel really insecure about, like, my body, like, my body odor, like, just growing up, like, going to high school, like, Mind you, my mom, you know, my dad and my mom, they made sure we had a roof over our head and food to eat, but we didn't have the most money. So there'd be times like when I'm, I had to like steal my sister's shoes and steal socks and all types of crazy stuff like that. So <laughs> I had to wear something. So I was going through a lot of weird stuff. Like I felt really, really insecure about myself. I felt really bad about myself. Like it would be to the point where some days I would skip class. This was in high school. Like I would skip a uh, class I would skip the whole day of class and I'm not no cap. Like I would sit in the bathroom from like 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. or something like that. Like from the from the start of school to the end of school. And it's just because I had I was so overwhelmed. I had so much anxiety. I was so ashamed of myself. Like I don't know what was what I was I don't know what was going on with me, you know? And I didn't know how to talk to nobody. I didn't know how to go talk to the school counselor. Like I didn't trust nobody. Um so it was a very, very scary time that I was going through. And I didn't know how to really speak that to my parents, like I'm going through this, that, and third. My, my mom was very hard body, you know? She was what you call hard body. So when you tell her stuff, you know, she like suck it up, keep going. But for me, I'm very emotional. And you know, now that I'm older, I, I've learned that it's good to be emotional, but I was very, very emotional. And you know, when she would like, be like, you know, suck it up, be good, da, da, da. It, it got pretty tough. Like I wanted to commit suicide. I didn't want to live. And you know, all of this at the age of like 14, 15, 16, a lot of people didn't even know it. I even had a journal one time and it was actually a journal and I think it said suicide on it. And like, I wanted to kill myself multiple, multiple times. And I'm just gonna be honest. Like I wanted to literally end my life on multiple occasions. Like I remember crying like in front of the mirror. Like I was crying in front of this mirror like while I was in high school and I just was just crying and crying. I'm just like, bro. Like, I didn't want to live. I would go online and talk to, like, online therapists, like, telling them, like, hey, I want to kill myself. And people don't know this, but I'm just going to be transparent because God is giving me the boldness. And I don't know who who life, who life I could also help. So I would be talking to, like, therapists online, like, you know, and that there would be strangers um, literally helping me keep my life together. Like, I remember I started playing, like, this song, like, by Biggie. And it was, like, uh, some, it was, like, a suicidal song he made, I think. I forgot how to go, thank God, because I don't want to sing that over my life. But at the time, I would be blasting that, and ain't nobody found, felt, find it weird at all. I ended up getting put out from the county to Baltimore City, and I don't know if you guys know, Baltimore is pretty harsh. When I went out there, the kids did not, was not friendly. They wasn't like, bro, they like, who is this person that, you know, I, I, I'm coming from the suburbs, so they like, you talk like a white girl, like, who's this girl from the county? So that was pretty, that was pretty harsh. I saw a lot of like dope fiends. I saw like a lot of dope fiends and people who abuse drugs, like kind of slouching all over the place. That's when I started seeing a lot, a lot of stuff. Saw a lot of fights, like to the point where people be bleeding out their nose, like saw people selling drugs, saw people doing drugs, even I did drugs. I started doing drugs because my cousin was doing drugs and the people he was doing was doing drugs, so I was doing drugs. And that's just how it goes, like when you get in certain cliques and groups. At that point, I really felt like I didn't know who I was. Like, I was staying with like one of my relatives and literally I was like well, sleeping on a mattress. And man, I felt really like, I felt like nobody wanted me because I had got put out multiple times before then, so I just felt like unwanted at that point. I'm like, whatever, I'm unwanted. Then I started messing with this guy in high school. Um, turns out that relationship ended up being very mentally, mentally, what's the, mentally manipulative, physically manipulative, and just abusive. It was terrible, horrible, but it's like when you lack love as a, as a young woman and you're not getting proper love from your mom and you're not, you don't have a father. My father, you know, I love him, and even if he's watching this, I love you, but you know, my father was abusing drugs, so he was absent in my life. You know, I still have love for him and I forgive him, but that's just what it is. You know, nobody, you know, you feel like nobody loves you. Like, you know, my mom was kind of disappointed in me. Um, my stepdad, he was busy working. Like, he was kind of too, like, taking care of everything. Like, you know, he's a little bit more calmer than my mom, but 
yeah and I, don't get me wrong i have my times where i would lash out where i would like break stuff where i would scream where i would yell like you know i'm gonna kill myself like all types of crazy stuff so yeah yeah like anyways when you like a lot of love and this is for any girls young girls that could be watching this like if you're with somebody who's treating you wrong mentally abusing you physically abusing you taking advantage of you you're, you're not alone we all been there before but just know that you know you deserve better than that you don't deserve somebody to mistreat you because you want to feel love you don't deserve to be somebody's doormat because you want to feel love you don't deserve to just be treated like crap because you feel like oh well this person loves me and that was my case i just felt like oh well everybody else hates me and this person must like me because he's nice and that wasn't the case <laughs> so down the road having a child with him was just freaking awful um i remember throwing up like when i'm pregnant i had got pregnant down the line with his child a few years later like and i was throwing up and he would laugh at me when i'm throwing up like it was bad like he would be smoking weed like i would wake up get i had work at five o'clock in the morning and i would go downstairs and he's smoking weed with his friends and all types of all types of crazy stuff so it's like bro this is obviously not the love i need you know that was what i call it a counterfeit relationship sent by the enemy which i know now because he don't want me to find who i'm really supposed to be with but yeah that was bad so ladies young ladies older ladies know your worth don't let nobody treat you like a piece of crap wait on christ jesus to guide you to your spells like it's okay to wait you know heal yourself out and i always advise people to heal themselves before jumping into another relationship because don't just jump somewhere and bring your baggage and bad spirits like cleanse yourself get yourself together right you know get to know god but that's why i'm here to tell y'all like whatever you're going through whoever's watching this video i've been there i've done it and i'm here to tell you i made it on the other side you know me and my husband once we started doing the youtube thing or whatever we was like really desperate like we kind of got desperate to like make videos and the videos we have started making we're like we'll make it like even if you go on my youtube right now i wasn't gonna take these videos off but you'll see like stuff like playing with my kitty prank and just absolutely vulgar things that we were making and it's like i'm not shaming anybody who's making it still like that's you and your journey but for us it's just like now when i look at it it's like bro i don't want to bring that type of atmosphere to youtube i don't want to i don't want kids to look at that i don't want my kids when they get older to look at me like what is this so it's just like yeah we went through a phase of just kind of being desperate doing content and i feel like that's when god kind of took our computer and we took a step back like okay well and we started going on tiktok and on tiktok it was like okay well let's just be more you know lovey dovey you know show black love this y'all blowing my phone up right now this is y'all but i love y'all but we was just like let's be more lovey dovey and so we just started making more lovey dovey content and also another thing i was i was taking shots thank you lord i was saying i used to i was taking so many shots and i'm gonna just tell you tell you guys about christ because this whole thing is about jesus christ and how he saved my life and what he did to help me and how he could free you too so at one point you know i wasn't getting that much help with my kids like i said i have four kids um i wasn't getting that much help and i had to work i was working at amazon i was really really tired um we were trying to make ends meet at the same time we were trying to like heal and do things as a couple as a relationship so I got to the point where I was so exhausted, I just started drinking so many shots. Like, I mean, I was a drunkard. Like I was a definition of a drunkard. And I would still be in my mind telling myself like, I'm not a drunkard. I would be Googling like, am I, like, how do I know if I'm a drunkard? Or how do I know if I get drunk too much? And I'm like, man, I'm good. But it got to the point where I would literally be going to work and I'll take, I'll buy like three shots and put it in my work bag and I'll be at work drinking shots. Get home from work drinking shots middle of the day drinking shots i even told my friend one time at work like hey can you take me to the liquor store I went to the liquor store drinking shots and it was just out, completely out of hand and it got to a point where i had to like cry out to god because i felt lost i felt lonely i felt confused i felt ashamed of myself i felt like a failure going out like in the clubs and stuff like just that's not even like me for real like i ain't never been a type to go to clubs 
So it was just like, I also felt like I was trying to be somebody who I'm not trying to fit in with this generation. Like, oh, I have to dress like this and act like this and listen to this and do this. And it's like, that's not the case. Like, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to follow God. It's okay to read your Bible. It's okay to pray. It's okay to be married at a young age. It's okay to just be a decent human being. Like, you don't got to be F this and F that and turkey here. You don't got to do that. You know, and it's just like this generation glorifies it so much that you just think like, oh, I have to be this way. And that's that's where I, that's the, the way I started turning. Like, started dressing a little crazy, started talking a little crazy, started acting a little crazy. Like, just ways that I wouldn't even want my daughters acting. You know, from there... I'm just like, I need freaking help. There, I'm just like, dude, I need freaking help. Like, I was desperate. I done tried everything. I done got drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk. I done cried, I done cried. I done sat in my bed, depressed, depressed, depressed. For Sometimes I was sitting in my bed, like, sit on the couch for days. My house was filthy, like, filthy. My husband, like, poor Q, walking around, cleaning the house, doing all of this stuff. And I'm just sitting there soaking in just depression and anxiety and just sinking like i feel like i was seeking sinking into a hole it was so bad it was such a heavy feeling horrible feeling it got to the point where one time i i used to get drunk so much i wasn't drinking water i wasn't like drinking electrolytes so it was like i'm getting drunk and drunk and drunk one after the other and i have and i have low iron so i would get up and i would just feel dizzy or like i'm gonna pass out and i was really hurting my health like it got to the point where i, I think i used to take shots and be like lord because I would feel my heart burning, like right here, be burning. And I'd be like, Lord, I just pray that I don't die when I drink this. Like, that's how bad it got to that point. And it was like, it's almost like I was drowning. And a lot of people didn't know that I was drowning and like depression, anxiety, and all of that stuff. But, you know, as a mother and, you know, as somebody who has children that's looking up to you, you got to just kind of keep going. Uh, even when you feel like you can't go no more. So it's just, I was just drinking. I'm trying to drink my feelings away. I'm trying to drink the pain away. I'm just trying to drink everything away. Like, I'm drinking. Okay, dang, my kids just, I'm drinking. Dang, I'm thinking about this, I'm drinking. Dang, it's crazy how, like, I'm drinking. So I was just so drunk all the time. Like, if you saw me at that time, I was probably drunk. But anyways, I I had woke up one day and I was, and I was, I think I was watching... I don't know. His name is your brother, Ashar, guys. I'll link his thing in the bio, but he really helped save my life. So as I'm watching him, he starts just convicting me. Like, do you have a relationship with Jesus? I bet you you don't. I bet you you woke up this morning and you ain't say thank you. I bet you you put on that Saturday outfit and you are looking cute, but is your spirit right? And I'm starting to listen to him like, hold on now. Because you know I believe in Jesus. You know I love God. I'm like, man, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. I'm like, hold on now. I didn't thank God when I woke up. I did. I haven't been putting God first. And that's when that started convicting me. And if you guys don't know what convicting me, I mean, to just, you know, tug at your heart. Like, yeah, I'm talking to you. Like, God specifically is talking to you. Get it right. And so once I started feeling convicted and convicted because I kept watching him day after day after day. One day I was like, dang. And he was like, you know, just get off this line right now and talk to God, I think not completely sure but i feel like that's what i remember and i remember getting off the line and my room was disgusting it was dirty i needed to clean up so bad but i was in a really deep depression like my husband was doing the best he could like he couldn't do everything so the room was like crazy and i just go in there and i'm like lord i'm sorry for the mess it's dirty you know i don't know i don't know what i was doing y'all i'm telling y'all this is just straight facts i didn't know what i was doing and i just go into this corner and i'm just like lord i can't do this no more like I'm tired of drinking, I need help. And it's like, Christ loves when people come to him on their own. All right guys, so I have to re-record what I said because the enemy is a liar, the devil is a liar. It stopped recording what I was saying. So I'm gonna punch back in again, okay? So I was really passionate, I gotta get back passionate because I had this whole thing recorded out for y'all and the camera wasn't recording, okay, it wasn't. It's okay y'all. We're gonna punch back and we're gonna get this testimony out there. Anyways, I had went into my room. I told y'all it was dirty, it was filthy. And then that's when I cried out to God and I'm like, God, and all the tears were just coming out. Fast forward, uh, like an hour and a half later, I go downstairs and I take a nap. And then that's when I feel the Holy Spirit for the first time. 
I felt God, like I felt his spirit for the first time, the love, the glory, just the how magnificent, it was just a magnificent thing. And I felt it all over me. And my, it's like my spirit already knew my father. So my spirit's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I needed this. Hallelujah. And I'm just like, physically, I don't know what's going on. And then there was a point, there was a point where the enemy was actually trying to muzzle me as a holy, you know, because he saw that I was, I was given, basically being filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel like he was trying to muzzle me or intervene with it. And I feel like that just clicked in my brain. But the Holy Spirit was pulling me and the Holy Spirit was pulling me and the Holy Spirit is so much love, so, so much glory, just, just this amazing being and the Holy Spirit is a person so it's just, he's just this amazing being and I'm like I'm like Lord I don't want to die I'm not ready to die yet like Lord I don't want to die and I'm just telling that's how powerful the Holy Spirit is will, he will bring you to your knees he will make you he will make you cry he will make you shake tremble and I thought I was dying but I, I, I obviously wasn't I it was I was new to it so but that was the Holy Spirit even still now guys I still get nervous or like overwhelmed when the Holy Spirit comes to me and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is God, like freaking out and stuff. <laughs> but I'm learning and I'm growing. It's like my very first real experience with the Holy Spirit and I cried out to him after everything I was going through, the drinking shots, the depression, like even still I haven't really told anybody this, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I would have thoughts of like, just like, like just not being here no more being a mother and that's horrible and it was just time to give it to god and then once i gave everything to god things got better so after that i believe me and my family we got baptized um me and my husband we started reading our bible praying um i joined like this prayer line one of our neighbors invited us to like this well, one of, my, one of our neighbors gave us this prayer lines number and we started calling the prayer line and getting on there at like five o'clock in the morning and praising the Lord. And then they baptized us. And then this prayer line called the fast. And during this fast, I had learned so much about God. I was un, I was really having the truth unveiled, revealed to me. And I'm like, yo, that's the truth. So my mind was just blown. And, you know, I could feel God guiding me in you know, just helping me through this process of work, process of learning. Um, it was like, it was, it was kind of like a little scary because it's like, man, I don't know what this is. So I'm just opening up this Bible. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. But the guy who I usually watch on TikTok, he was like, just start with the first page. So I just literally started reading the first page of the Bible. Just started seeking God for myself. Like, let me see what this is about. And I would feel his spirit all over me at nighttime. I would feel him checking on me. I would feel him loving me. His love is amazing, patient, kind, merciful, miraculous. He's an amazing God. And he will accept you just like you are. As you can see, I was drinking. I was basically a drunk. I was depressed. Like I felt useful. Like I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't successful. And God still came, God still accepted me for exactly who I am. So it's like, God will accept you where you are. A lot of people feel like they have to come to God clean or they're not good enough to come to God. But God is saying, come as you are. Not as you dress, but like as you are mentally, physically, and spiritually. Come as you are because that's when he comes in and help you and do the work. I'm not going to say do the work for you, but he helped you do the work. Because the Holy Spirit going to help you, but you got to want to help yourself too. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's what happened from there. Like... I, I, and you know since then it's like ever since I made that change ever since I was you know I'm still trying to submit myself to God it's not easy but ever since I started seeking him seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you and as I started seeking him seriously he started adding things unto me like my home like finances like like I don't know, just doing things blowing my mind. Like I saw myself on websites, multiple blogs, blogs, uh, not blogs, it's called blogs. Like people like sharing me, like so many black love people sharing my content. I've reached millions of millions of people, like gained thousands and thousands of followers in the amount of like weeks. Like 
I had like 11 million views on TikTok. Like I've been working with many, many companies and this is all because of God. And I take no credit. This is all because of the glory of God. And everything literally changed once I gave it to him. And I was just like, you know what? Here you go, you can just take it, it's too much. And he's, you know, not only will he help you like financially, because a lot of people think, oh, I want some money, I don't want to be here. But he'll help you spiritually and mentally and physically too. It's a good God, but yes. So I give him the honor, the glory and the praise and we say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, your name will and shall be glorified on this YouTube because you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are God. And he's also coming back very soon, God. So make sure you have a relationship with Christ. And you can see, he's real. This ain't the same me no more. I'm a new creature in Christ. Can't tell. But I love you guys and I hope this touched your spirits. And I probably do another part two because I didn't really get down to the gritty. But love you guys and I'm gonna pass it over to my husband, so peace.